a long time ago, a sea turned into a lake, and the lake became a vast salt flat. This is Uyuni, a salt desert and the miracle of the Andes. It is a place of endless mysteries of nature, which seems too surreal to be a place on Earth. Now, I am off to the primal face of Bolivia, the secretive country in South America. This is a mountainous area at an elevation of 3,000 meters above sea level in the central region. Here lives the llama, a blessing of the Andes and an innocent people who accept nature as it is. I am off to a primitive place, heaven on earth. I flew from Korea to Bolivia, located on the opposite side of the globe. It was a 36-hour flight with connections in Los Angeles in the U.S. and Lima in Peru. I arrive in Bolivia, a country smack in the middle of South America, like a heart. My first destination for today is Cochabamba, a city located in the center of the country. If Bolivia is the heart of South America, Cochabamba could be called the heart of Bolivia. Because it is in the center of the country, it lies in the path to all other cities. However, it isn't just because of its location that many people like me visit this city every year. Rather, it is because of the unique charm of the city. I decided to go to the highest point of the city to see everything the city within the embrace of the Andes has to offer. This is San Pedro Hill named after one of Jesus' 12 disciples. A giant statue stands at the top of the hill that brings not only a religion together, but also Cochabamba and the whole of Bolivia. The Christ of Peace is as tall as some 40 meters. It weighs 2,200 tons and stands 265 meters higher than the city. El Cristo de la Concordia, or the Christ of Peace, is known to be the largest statue of Christ in the world. It's the biggest that uh, Redentor Christ in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, it's the, the, the same image. Sinto bem, fico bem aqui, avistando, mirando o Cristo. The statue offers peace to those who look at it. It always stares at the same point. Christ is also very important to see. The two arms stretch out toward the city. From the center of Bolivia, it embraces Bolivians with peace, just as the name of the statue indicates. You can even go inside the statue. It was constructed over a span of eight years to celebrate the visit of Pope John Paul II in 1994. Ever since, many tourists from all over the world visit annually. It is steeper than I expected.
not to mention the endless stairs. I am already running out of breath because of the high elevation, and having to climb up hundreds of steps just makes it tougher. Nevertheless, there must be a reason people endure the difficult climb to get to the top. There are holes all over the statue. I was wondering what they were when someone tells me that they are all observatories. Not only locals, but foreign tourists also make sure to visit this statue. When in Cochabamba, for the marvelous view, this child has a hard time taking his eyes off of it. Good. Gracias. Oh. <laughs> it's nice to see the Cochabamba goes all the way around. Yeah, the, 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 from the, 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 the Cristo, you know, it, Cochabamba uh -huh. is, Cochabamba. Built, see, uh -huh. is built all around yeah, yeah, the yeah. statue. Oh, you're going to let me see. See? So everywhere you walk, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. different provinces of uh, Cochabamba. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's Each really hole nice. looks out to a different view. Right. Kocha means lake in the native Quichan language, and Bamba means highlands. This is the origin of the name Cochabamba. This place shows off an intensive view of the city. Do you wonder where I am? There's a way I can show you. I stick my hand out of the hole. I am standing near the chest of the Statue of Christ. But the beauty of Cochabamba can be seen from anywhere you please, including the end of its sleeve, heel, and on top of the shoulder. The statue seems to be telling me that everything on earth is a blessing and the source of happiness. I leave Cochabamba for my final destination, of Toro Toro National Park, situated 140 kilometers south of the city. A people who regard even barren land a blessing live in a village near the park. I visit a village in the middle of the Andes. <laughs> I am eating the snack because sweets are known to prevent suffering from altitude sickness. I decide to slowly take a look around the village. At the entrance of the village, I hear a pig squealing, but I see something that looks like a cross between a dog and a pig. It piques my interest. <laughs> Long bristles are occasionally found on pigs that aren't domesticated. They have evolved to adapt to the environment of the wild and survive in it. Here I find siblings who complement the nature of the highlands. Hola. 
However, they freeze as a stranger approaches them. Hola. Their innocent faces closely reflect the untainted nature. They are the children of a Quechan couple. Of the Indios, the Quechans are usually known to work in agriculture. The Quechans cultivate alpine crops like potatoes and barley that grow well in the highlands of the Andes. along with raising cattle, pigs, and sheep. So the mountain is an essential means of living and is the foundation of their lives. An animal follows the young girls around like a dog chasing after its master. I approach them to ask about it. It's a llama, a type of animal only found in the Andes region. The baby llama still feeds on milk. I try feeding it. Is it full now? It keeps taking steps backward while feeding. Until it stops drinking completely. <laughs> there was actually a story behind the baby llama. It should be raised in the pasture, like other llamas, but it was abandoned by its mother when it was a week old, so the sisters decided to raise it. <laughs> Llamas are part of the traditional life of the Andes that can't be left out. It is an indispensable animal that gladly gives up not only its fur, but also its meat and milk for people. <laughs> They aren't wary of people, but rather they can't take their eyes off of the camera with their prettily decorated faces. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> it shows its wild nature every moment. Natives of the Andes have been training these llamas in their own way and communicating with them. I can feel the love the owners have for llamas through each fur decoration. I meet up with the sisters I saw earlier. <laughs> the house the girls live in with their parents was cozier and cooler than I expected.
Liesel, the older sister, is in a rush. And... <laughs> this black dog swiftly hops into the back seat as if used to it. Thanks to the dog, I have to get in the bed of the truck for the ride to the destination. The road gets bumpier as we get closer to our destination. Wow, look at Stephen. Oh. We are speeding down an unpaved road at an unimaginable speed. Liesel is solely focused on the llama and its baby. After about a 20 minute drive from the house, we finally arrive. Now we have to quickly find the llama. Thankfully, we are able to quickly spot the mother and newborn llama. However, Liesel has to face an unexpected confrontation with the mother llama. Why is Liesel trying to take the baby away from its mother? She is doing so to keep the newborn safe from wild beasts. However, the mother is too sensitive, and Lizelle is having a hard time getting closer. She hasn't seen anyone get hurt, but she warns us because a dog was once stomped to death. Llamas are usually gentle and don't often get aggressive. Tension is in the air as one tries to protect its baby while the other tries to take it away. I don't know which side to root for, since I know both are trying to help the baby. <laughs> After a while, the sisters decide not to take the baby llama today. They believe that the strong maternal instinct of the llama that was able to protect the baby from the humans would be enough to fight off mountain predators too. The warm hearts of the girls make me think about so many things. The natives of the Andes have been the owners of this barren land for a long time. They would have had to listen to the mountain's whisper, feel the flow of it, and express respect for the force of the mountain. Llamas were always there in the midst of life on the highlands that require a tough spirit. They must have been valuable companions that stuck by man's side. This is a place that creates a history of friendship between men and animals. 
Now I am off in search of an older hidden story of this land. This place is 150 times the size of Yoido in Korea. It is Toro Toro National Park, my final destination. Massive mountains and cliffs with a red tint are aligned along the road. I believe I can look forward to this part of my journey. However, the anticipation only lasts for a short while. The path to Toro Toro is blocked. The car in the front has a flat tire and is being repaired. The bus is full of students on a trip from Peru. <laughs> Finally, the car is repaired, and we all start moving. The joy of traveling is that people can become friends, even through short encounters. On another note, I may be facing trouble. The sun is slowly beginning to set. I'm worried about traveling an unfamiliar road in the dark. We drive through the dark without a single street light for two hours or so. Something appears in front of us for the first time. I see lights in the distance as we pass a sign. There is a village inside the park. It is a little past 10 o'clock. I am worried no one would be there, but the villagers are gathered for a meeting to my relief. They could have been uncomfortable with the sudden visit of foreigners, but thankfully they allow us to stay the night. It is morning in Toro Toro. The village is in the center of the national park, where development is prohibited. It is nestled in the embrace of tall mountains. The entire population is approximately 10,000. The villagers are Quechans, natives of the Andes. Tall mountains are seen everywhere from this village. Every winding curve of the folds is visible. How could nature have created such a land without the help of man? We meet someone who could answer my questions. It's Mario, who has been a guide for 44 years. Hi, thank you. Hello, welcome. He says we have to see this place in order to understand the lay of the land. There are round shapes printed on the rocks that are visible when he scrapes away the dirt. Bota el barro a los costados, las manos pequeñitas, para coser, hacía esta operación. 
como el pollo. Footprints of coleosaurs, which are the ancestors of birds. Two footprints of rare dinosaurs remain intact to this day. Allá la mano, y este pie levanta el barro. El barro, desde aquí, el barro lo cubre la mano delantera. Igualito allá, y viceversa siempre está cubriendo la... There are as many as 2,000 dinosaur footprints found all over the park. From the age of the fossils, it is assumed that the history of the park is at least 200 million years. The long history of the land is unfathomable with a human's limited imagination. Endless time met a technician called Nature to create this masterpiece. We are on our way to see another great work of nature. We walk 30 minutes along a rocky cliff that doesn't easily allow strangers to pass. Finally, we arrive at our destination. A majestic view that is more breathtaking than the tough walk awaits us. Ah, bueno, bueno. It is nature at its pure state, without being tainted by the touch of humans. I am standing at the beginning of time. This rock that reminds me of a long nose is another work of art created by water, wind, and time. Podemos ver un animal que vive en África, el elefante. Ah, elefante, elefante. Exacto. Ah, coquiri. Es un elefante muy idéntico. La trompa. Ah, te digo, co, co. Eh, co. Also, there is a rock shaped just like a turtle and people who are dancing their hearts out to traditional Bolivian music. They even have a cameraman capturing this fun scene on video. Hola. Sí. <laughs> ¿Qué están haciendo? ¿Qué está haciendo ahorita? Video clips. Musicales. Ah. They are lip-syncing the songs and faking the instruments, but they are the official singers for the Toro Toro National Park promotional video. I could tell that their facial expressions and dance moves weren't something common. <laughs> I can't just pass by since it is more than a coincidence that we met in the middle of this vast park. I keep my greetings as short as possible. <laughs> Then I try to join in on dancing to the music. It looked so easy when I was just watching, but this fancy footwork, it's not as easy as it looks. This isn't going to be part of the promotional video, is it? I leave the short but fun encounter with the Toro Toro singers behind and travel back into time.
This time, we are going 60 million years into the past. Ah. <laughs> this is a massive natural cave that must be at least 10 meters tall. At first glance, they look like any other rocks, but it becomes another story when you hear about what happened here. De esa forma los oleajes o las corrientes de agua desgastan y erosionan. 60 million years ago, this used to be one giant rock. The solid rock was cut and shaped into its current form through the endless polishing and tempering of water, wind and the sun. Ah! Sixty million years have passed. However, the cave isn't completed yet. As long as time continues, the cave will continuously change. I am at the end of my journey before I know it. This is a marvelous site of Toro Toro Canyon, created by mountains, rocks, and water. It is a giant canyon that starts at an elevation of 3,600 meters above sea level and goes down to 1,900 meters above sea level. There was a time when I thought that traveling was all about meeting people until I faced this magnificent nature. However, land and nature are what create the lives of people. From the center of the Andes to the plateaus of Bolivia, I carry the stories of this place, like the strata of history, and continue my journey.